Uncle Thor here. Um, one of my early adventures when we went public with heathenism was we got in contact with a fella, or he contacted us, named Gutterrhyme Bambi Breaches. He was out of New Orleans. He was running a heathen newsletter. We traded newsletters. I've got to admit, some of his advertisers were a little strange, but he seemed like a pretty straightforward guy. We traded notes and he, uh, you know, things went pretty well. Uh, we got along pretty well. And after a few months, though, some of his uh, letters and things started getting weird, like there was um, some sort of uh, voodoo invasion of America. I thought it was a joke and even wrote an article, sort of a humorous thing about it. I didn't realize he was serious until about a month later. Um, a friend of his called and she was asking about him. Turns out uh, he was getting a little strange after his marriage had broken up and there seemed to be some problems. We tried to get a hold of him but couldn't and we figured, well, we'll see what happens. And a few weeks later I get a phone call and who is it? Got a rhyme Bambi breaches and he's on Staten Island. He had hitchhiked this whole way up here and walked across the Gothels Bridge. No small feat. Uh, we picked him up on the other side of the island and brought him to our apartment and it soon became obvious this guy was a bit delusional. He had uh, a little carry bag with him. He had a little foldable kung fu swords with him. It was kind of strange but I decided to take charge of things. I have a background dealing with uh, substance abusers and the me mentally ill so the first thing we did was we got him cleaned up, got him fed, get him a change of clothes and let him at least feel human and that really started you know the process. That really got him back to earth. We talked, we let him stay at the house a couple of days and uh, we were just going to wait until he was healthy enough to send home to his family. He had family in Florida because we knew he didn't want to get caught up in the New York City mental health system. That could be nightmarish. So finally, when we got him loosened enough, we took him, I took him to the bus terminal in New York and uh, paid for his ticket. He said, oh, no, you can go because I knew he would cash it in and run around the city. He was still a little bit out there, but I saw him get on the bus. And that was the last of it. We figured he's on his way south to his home. We got a letter a few months later, and it was obliterated in one of those little packets from the post office, and it had a check in it for the bus fare. And a little note that he went, well, he got home. He's in Florida, he spent 30 days in Georgia. I guess they picked him up and put him in the loony bin to see if he'd get any better or well enough to send home. I don't know what exactly happened, but that was, uh, and it was signed K. Ross was the name on the check. We never did know his real name, but he was an unusual thing. Um, the gutter rhyme bit came from the fact that he was a Chetro Toll fan and a Bambi breeches was because he used to like to wear deer skin trousers. And he, he claimed they had some magical ability, but you do meet some characters around heathenism and uh, he was one of the more colorful. I recently wrote about another one, uh, I called him Biker Bob and the article his real name was Biker Bill and this guy showed up and he was a character. Uh, he was a skinny little guy in his 30s, uh, you know, trying to come off as the macho biker and uh, he seemed friendly enough at first but he always said he was trying to find good people and the more he talked about this the more I realized that there's something with, there's something with this character. Well he came over a couple of times and all he wanted to do was sit in the house just some place to sit and I'm telling him look I'm working you really should and oh no I'm just gonna sit I'll be here but the odd thing was he didn't watch TV he didn't read magazines he just sat there well after a couple times uh, biker Bill we just didn't answer the door when he showed up but I think he got the message the good people he was looking for he found them but he had his own standards and they weren't gonna put up with him he was a loafer an idler who just wanted to hang out, find a place to waste time and uh, energy. This guy didn't really do anything, but he was a ratatosk. Now, there was a group who had helped us early on, and all of a sudden they had turned cold on us. Um, it was a pagan, I'd say for a pagan heathen group, you know, doesn't matter where, which it was. Um, 
and I kind of wondered why, but you know, you accept those sort of things uh, around paganism in general and heathenism, especially. There was a lot of this. Uh, who's who's friendly with who? And little disputes back in the '90s. It seems everybody thought they were the heathen, and everyone else was wrong. So there's a lot of these little feuds. So we just wrote it off. Well, he calls up and he says that, uh, you know, we, oh, you shouldn't fight. You know, you hope you should get along. I says, well, yeah, well, why? Oh, well, they heard that you talk to Jews and they don't like that. And I was like, the hell? So, because I didn't think they were bigoted like that. I didn't think they were felt that way. I mean, I'm living in Staten Island. I've always lived up until where I am now predominantly in that area, you know, within a few miles of New York. Um, we had Jewish neighbors, we had Jewish uh, co-workers, you know, friends. I even have some Jewish relatives. So then I thought, well, I'm going to give Ratatoska tail a take back to his buddies, and this will really put a crimp in their drawers. And it's the best of it is it's true. And I said to him, well, you know, Bill, uh, I don't know. I mean, I talk to Jews at least 10 times a day, you know, and, get along just fine. I even have some cousins who are Jewish and I get to see them now and then. So, uh, I don't know. Um, I'm going to keep talking to Jews whether they like it or not. And, uh, got him off the phone. Well, he couldn't wait to get off the phone. He was almost sputtering because now we had a juicy tale to take to his friends. He got off the phone. I hung up and I said, here it goes. Ratatosk went right to them and said, you won't believe what he said about this. So, uh, killing two birds with one stone, that was the last of Biker Bill, and that was the last we heard from that group. Like I said, there's some characters out there, and you eventually come across them. Um, we had more than a few. And now, as you get older, you just sit back and say, well, it's just one of those things, you know. This isn't your conventional religion, where there were certain rules and regulations and people have to validate themselves. Here you got something where uh, anyone can claim to be anything and it's hard to verify them. So in that atmosphere, you do get your share of very interesting and peculiar people. To paraphrase a, uh, a saying that I heard in the movie The Longest Day, there's some peculiar blokes on this here beach. And that's the truth. This is Uncle Thor. Glad to share a couple of funny stories with you. Signing out. Have a good one.